ranks as a contender as he starts his journey against Mike Shepard of West Virginia. He has a one year plan. He has to move fast. He knows he is 45 years old. Brian Adams caught up with Antonio. Antonio, this is your comeback fight. It's been nearly 10 years since you did the impossible by knocking out the unbeatable Roy Jones Jr. You can't paint in a heavyweight. Why should the viewers tonight take you serious? Well, I mean, because I'm a bona fide heavyweight. I'm, I weighed in at 221. I've trained. I'm focused now. And I got a goal of becoming a heavyweight champion. I mean, America needs it, man. They need a face. They, you know, they need a personality. And uh, it's not over yet. You know what I'm saying? And I still feel healthy. I still feel young. Even at the age of 45, I know if my sparring is any indication, I still got it. So right now, you know, we're just going to go out here and take it one fight at a time. But we're on a year plan to become heavyweight champion. I'm not ready right now to defeat Vladimir Klitschko. But within a year, I'll be ready to beat any heavyweight. Well, you mentioned Vladimir Klitschko. Um, if you're a heavyweight, the ultimate goal is Vladimir Klitschko. Obviously, there's a long line. What do you plan on doing to propel yourself to the front of that line? Well, undoubtedly, this is a business. I don't think any heavyweight out there campaigning has my resume, uh, my history. And uh, five-time champ says that, you know, I can beat anybody on any given night. I've been to that mountaintop five times. But this is a different type of mountaintop because we got two big giants standing at the top. And like I said, I I'm just a firm believer. I've done the impossible before, so I don't doubt myself. All I needed was a dream. All I needed was a goal. Stay tuned. I'm going to show the world some real magic. I'm going to show you how to chop down two giants. We shall see. It has been nine and a half years since he shocked the world and became a huge celebrity when he knocked out in the second round the great Roy Jones Jr. He showed up on talk shows. He wound up in a movie, Rocky, the last one they made. And you see he has the personality to certainly carry himself in any situation. Mike Shepard comes in here. He's a guy that will take a fight on, oh, about 10 minutes notice, but he's had more time, he feels, to prepare for this fight than he's had in a long time. He's a kickboxer who travels around the world, but he's also been in with some top competition in the heavyweight ranks. He's 38 years old now as we take a look at the tail of the tape. Antonio Tarver is a southpaw. He weighed in at 221 pounds, far above what he made his name at in the 170 pound, 75 pound light heavyweight division. And Mike Shepard, they come in at the exact same height, same reach, but probably a world of difference in the talent level. Heavyweights scheduled for 10 here at the BBT Center and Sunrise. Let's send it to Joe Martinez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live on Fox Sports 1 from the BBT Center here in Sunrise, Florida. This is the main event of the evening. Ten rounds scheduled for the vacant interim NABA Heavyweight Championship. Presented by Golden Boy Promotions and sponsored by the law firm of Andajar and Levine. Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina, and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Sanctioned by the Florida State Athletic Commission, the Executive Director, Cynthia Heffron, with Assistant Executive Director in attendance, Frank Gentile. NABA Supervisor is George Martinez. The three judges scoring this bout at ringside on the 10-point must system. Alex Levin, Billy Ray, and Rocky Young. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Sam Burgos. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Fight fans in the Sunshine State, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing solid black trunks, he weighed in officially 227 and one half pounds. This veteran brings a record that stands at 21 victories, 15 defeats, one draw with nine wins coming by way of knockout. Hailing from Elizabeth, West Virginia, here is Lightning Mike Shepard. <laughs> and his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. A champion returns tonight, making his heavyweight debut, wearing black trimmed in gold. He weighed in officially 221 pounds. This veteran has 29 victories, six defeats, 20 wins coming by way of knockout. 
He is the former WBC, WBA, IBF, and Ring Magazine Light Heavyweight Champion of the World from Orlando, Florida, the Magic Man, Antonio second only. All right, gentlemen, remember, you gave the instructions in the back. Obey my command and protect yourself at all times. Looks good over here. Looks good over here. You have any questions? Any questions? Touch them up. Come out of the bell. Sam Burgess is your referee. We're scheduled for 10 rounds in the heavyweight division. We have to get used to saying that about Antonio Tarver because he made his name two divisions lighter than this. And I wanted to ask you, Brian, about fighters that when they come back, they usually come back at the weight what they made their reputation for. But Antonio, apparently, and you know him very well, sees an opportunity like everybody does these days in the heavyweight ranks. And I've got to give him credit, no matter what happens, for just attempting it. But he says he's going to fight the next year and never get out of shape. The journey begins right now against Mike Shepard. Scheduled for 10. And Shepard is the kind of fighter that says, well, I'm going to go right at him. What else can I do? And that presents challenges for Tarver, who's always been a pretty slick fighter. But you need power in this division just to keep people at bay at the very least. Well, to tell you a little story about Antonio Tarver's power, he never appeared to be a one-punch knockout type guy. But I remember the amateurs, all of the super heavyweight guys, and heavyweight guys used to hate spawn with him because they all said he punched harder than other heavyweights and other super heavyweights. And he was a lot of heavyweight damage. Well, he says he has having a lot of fun with this, his commitment to with his trainer, Orlando Fernandez. And we got to remember, we got to put things in perspective. In, in terms of being 45 years old, this is just his 36th professional fight. You know, Bernard Hopkins, who's still going, has 64 fights. Larry Holmes had 63. Roberto Duran, over 100. And of course, Sugar Ray Robinson set the standard with 200 fights, which is insane. Archie Moore had close to 200. Yeah, Archie Moore, too. So he doesn't have, a, you know, a lot, as you were talking about, a, not a lot of rough fights. I mean, he's got roughed around in the Chad Dawson fights. You know, Styles make fights. He, he couldn't handle Chad Dawson. We thought that might be the end, as we mentioned at the end of 2009. He lost a fight. Nobody expected him to lose to Glenn Johnson. Right. And he right, came back and beat Glenn Johnson. He had to beat Glenn Johnson, but that was right when he was at his pinnacle, when everybody, I mean, he's, he's showing up on all the late-night television shows for what he did to Roy Jones. Because, you know, you spend, you know, 20 seconds with him, you want to talk to him a little bit more. Round number one, good work inside. Mike Shepard's basically been stalking in and covering up. And Tarver's content to stay on the outside. And, and look what he can do and the type of shots he can throw. 52 seconds left. Round number one. So I wanted to see how Tarver handles Mike Shepard. Because Mike Shepard, a blue-collar guy, has come forward. He know no one's expecting him to win. He wants to test Tarver to see what Tarver's psyche is. See if he's really prepared to fight a heavyweight. 30 seconds left, round number one. Shepard has not been able to get inside and get to the body. Like you said, he wanted to take it right to him. He's throwing a little bit of a jab out there, but Tarver biting his tie, a left hand over the top. I see the timing a little off on Tarver. He's looking for that counter left up the cut, but his timing is a little off. Well, he'll work his way into it. Car, all four round number two in the heavyweight division Antonio Tarver in the black trunks with the yellow trim Mike Shepard in the solid black trunks Brian how do you think Tarver looked after one round of action again I thought he was a little sluggish in terms of um, his timing his rhythm and he was also breathing a little heavy a little too heavy you see him now taking short little um, breaths maybe he's not too comfortable as he thought he would be carrying his weight. Lead left hand. He wanted to put on a show, and he knows that he can't fool around too much with a journeyman like this if he expects to be taken seriously, but he's also got to find his rhythm. There's only so much you can do as a fighter. You've got to find your rhythm. You've got to set up your shots. you got to work it. 
He's not a one-punch knockout type of guy. He can knock you out with one, but there's a right-left that worked pretty good. Shepard hasn't offered any offense, so to speak, much in this fight. Well, people like Mike Shepard is needed in this sport. He's a journeyman, a worker. You call him to fight, he's there to fight. He's needed in this sport. He's needed to test people like Antonio Tarver who's coming back. Shepard will take a fight on about 15 minutes notice if <laughs> he gets the opportunity. Yeah, you know, talking to my good friend Christy Martin, who's from West Virginia, she's familiar with um, Mike Shepard, and she said the same thing. She's gonna he's going to test Tarver to see if Tarver has anything left. Well, to do that, he's going to have to get inside that reach. Uppercut from Tarver. Shepard holding on. <laughs> nice left hand to the chest area of Tarver. <laughs> Mike Shepard is a unique character. He um, asked them at the fighter meetings, take me through your standard day. He gets up at 6.50. He's a teacher. We asked him, what does he teach? And what did he say, Alan? He spends the whole day in the car. <laughs> He's a driver's ed teacher. And then he teaches a civics class. He says he has two students. <laughs> but the but point yeah, is. But he says active day. It right, active right, right, right. It's a full day. Yeah, it's a full day. <laughs> 6.50 in the morning, in the car all day, and then, you know, goes and trains a little bit in the evening. He has a little gym in his house. The nearest gym outside of Elizabeth, West Virginia. He says about a 45-minute to an hour drive. That's so when he gets sparring. That's when he can spar, yeah. <laughs> but so far, he's, he's still in there in round two against the Magic Man here from Sunrise, Florida. And he might make a few fans if he can hang in there a little bit longer. Mike Shepard throwing punches right here at the end is Tarver. We go to round number three in this heavyweight fight. Antonio Tarver on his one-year mission to get a shot at the title in the heavyweight division starting here in Sunrise, Florida in the black trunks with the gold trim. Mike Shepard in the all-black trunks. That's a little right hand up there. Right hook over the top and slap some leather. Tarver getting a little more active downstairs here. But I do like the fact that Tarver has a goal. He's on a one-year mission, and he's selecting opponents like Mike Shepard, someone that possibly he can knock out, but also someone who's going to take him around. So he's trying to work his way back in the right way. Well, no matter how much sparring you do, you need rounds under the lights and in real action to get it done, pumping that right hand out there. Of course, the famous southpaw, Antonio Tarver. I remember, a, a lot of guys have tried to um, come back or try to move to the heavyweight division and, and make a mark. We had James Tony recently try to do it. So Tarver know what he can do. Well, Tarver said, you know, there's no John Ruiz out there, the one that Roy Jones found to have to be at the right place at the right time. Not very highly regarded heavyweight champion John Ruiz. Tonight's uh, CompuBot stats or CompuBox stats are brought to you by ThrowdownFantasy.com. You draft fighters, track stats, and win. So, you know, he knows there's no tailor-made situation out there, and he's got to work his way into it. And again, the confidence has always been. He turned around right-handed too here. We don't see that very often. One minute left, round number three. Tarver hooking a little bit with the right hand and digging the body in. Nice yeah, that's, that body shot's going to be very effective. Immediately, Mike Shepard's mouth opens up as he looks for some air when you get hit in the body like that. 45 seconds left in round number three. Yeah, Tarver is actually bullying the bigger guy. He's trying to dig in. Keeping him pinned against the ropes. Working off the shoulder. That takes a ton of energy out of you. When you have the big body lying on you like that. And well, it nullifies any offense that Shepard exactly. wants to do.
right, they've gotten through three rounds here. Inside the beat. But earlier tonight, we had some heavyweight action. A guy that you might want to keep an eye on, Luis Ortiz. The Cuban King Kong made quick work of Alice Gonzalez out of Vega Baja, Puerto Rico. You like this guy. You say he's got a lot of skills, Brian. A lot of skills, a lot of patience, and a lot of power. And if you want to uh, contact us via Twitter, at Golden Boy, hashtag Golden Boy Live, we'd love to hear from you out there in the Twitter Nation Twitter universe. What do you think Antonio's thinking about now? Three rounds, Mike Shepard. I think his corner's trying to get him to dig in a little bit, apply a little more pressure, and see if he, I know he wants a stoppage. He may not say it, but he needs a stoppage against Mike Shepard. I was about to say, knowing Antonio, he's saying, okay, enough of this. I'm gonna end this. Round number four, scheduled 4-10. He doesn't quite, you know, at 221, he's... Oh, uppercut, and now I do it. Big uppercut right between the gloves, landed solidly, and you called it, Brian. Like I said, no one talked with him. He wants to end this. That was not a light shot at all. It echoed across the arena. Big left uppercut, but Shepard's back up. Got to give him credit. Tarver losing it, closing out. Digging the left hands into the body. The top is still and taking down his goes Shepard again. I have to give him credit for getting up after that first uppercut. He says he's okay, but there may not be any sense into continuing. Griggs is going to let him do it. <laughs> All right. He's not going to quit. No, he's not going to quit. That's the kind of challenge that Tarver needed. Down twice to Shepard. One more time, and that will do it. 138 left in round four. Sharp left hand cracks right on the nose of Shepard. The Shepard's credit. He's, he's the one moving forward. He's saying, give me some more. Well, yeah. test to test. Oh, he's wobbled once again. Another left hand. Shepard still on his feet. His knees buckled together. Right hand upstairs. Shepard gets nice. finally cracked with a left hook. And he's upset, but that's three knockdowns. That's it. <laughs> but Tony Tarver survives the challenge and closes in big fashion. But I got to give Mike Shepard credit. He could have bowed out after the first uppercut. But he said he's okay. He wanted to put on a show. Hey, listen, Mike Shepard did his job. He came in, he tested Antonio Tarver, he showed the Fox world what Antonio Tarver has. He does have a little more left than people thought. So, um, again, you can't doubt the guy. There was nothing soft about that punch. That no, it looked like it hurt. That's what you were talking about. A Tarver, has a, we were talking about it earlier, has a, that power from short range in close and people who sparred him said he would hurt him and they didn't know how he hurt him, but sometimes you have the heavy hands. George Foreman always talked about, you know, the six inch punt that knocked out Michael Moore. Let's take a look at it, Brian. Because if you, if you look, Antonio Talbot never really puts his full body into punches. You can see him setting up. He sort of threw an arm punch there with the left uppercut, but landed right on the chin. This is the second knockdown. Sort of right hook to the body. Um, Shepard was just hurt. This is the end of the fight. Nice, in an orthodox position. Overhand right, then that left hook there. Right on the point of the chin. Well, pretty much what we expected from Antonio Tarver tonight, getting the job done in the fourth round. It's Vince from my new... Tonight's CompuBack stocks are brought to you by ThrowdownFantasy.com. Draft fighters, track stats, and win. CompuBack stats. Let's get to our decision from Joe Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. One minute, 54 seconds. Round number four. Referee 
Sam Burgos puts a hog to the contest for your winner by TKO victory, the Magic Man, Antonio So far, so good for the self-imposed one-year journey for Antonio Tarver. There you see the straight left that put him down, and there's the uppercut. For Brian Adams, I'm Alan Massengale from Sunrise, Florida. Fox Sports Live begins right now.